Happiness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. Welcome to yet another installment of MS Creativers. We'll look at installment number four on the signs of the times. This is our last installment, and I invite you once again to the book of Luke. We are at chapter 21. We'll begin reading at verse 25 and make our way to verse 28. The King James Version provides as follows. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, man's hearts failing them for fear and for looking toward those things which are coming on the earth. For the power of heaven shall be shaken, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power with great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth near. May the good Lord bless the reading of this assurance. Let us spend a moment in prayer briefly. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the reminder that our redemption draws near each and every day, especially as we are reminded from your word. How we pray, dear Lord, that our hearts may not fail us because of the signs that go on. And dear Lord, may you even shorten the days so that many may be saved into your kingdom. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name, speak to us. Amen. Allow me to raise, as our custom is, our usual five points. What I want to stress here is just pointers not particularly to go to incidences, to evidence that these signs have been fulfilled. The, the first issue that I want you to notice is that there are going to be signs in the skies, on the sun and on the moon. I'll, I'll not go into the eclipses. I'll not go into the part where the moon turned red, but there'll be signs in the sky. The second thing that you're going to find is not only will these signs be localized in the sky, they are going to come to the land. It says, and upon the earth, distress of nations. We'll come back to this. There will be distress of nations with perplexity. Just hold that thought. And from the land, we move to signs on the sea, where we're going to have waves roaring and crashing onto the land and seeking to jump the boundaries that God set for them. And lastly, we're going to have signs within. Man's hearts are going to fail them for fear. They'll be fearing as they look at what is coming towards the earth. And lastly, not only are we going to have these signs within the sea, we're also going to have signs in heaven itself. The Bible says, for the power of heaven shall be shaken. These are interesting signs that we need to look at, but maybe I'm just going to look at the last three. What we want to note is the Bible says there shall be a distress of nations. You know, of late we have had fuel so The prices of fuel have gone up. Since Russia went on to attack uh, Ukraine, you know, this has been felt even as far as the African continent. Nations are in distress, especially nations that were even comatose before Russia invaded the Ukraine. They feel the impact even more. There is a national distress. The growth of the GDP is being revised and it usually ranges below 10%. We're having countries growing by maybe 2%, 3%. Our economies are not growing that much. They are under distress. We've had the global collapse of the economies. And when you look at these things, they are so close. They affect your bank wallet. They, they, they affect your bank balance. They affect your wallet. They, they affect your purchasing power. Such is the impact. And Christ spoke about these things. There shall be a national distress. When the richest amongst us become poor, what becomes of the poorest of them all? I do not know whether they join us or we even slide beyond the poorest. I do not know. But be that as it may, this shall be yet another sign, an economic sign, a financial sign. And secondly, we move on to the heart failures. Of late, you have had so many people die of heart attacks. And these heart failures are a medical condition. Some of them are going to be caused by fear. As people look at these things, the fear of the many things that surround them, the fear of tomorrow, the uncertainty of tomorrow, all these things may lead to people losing their lives due to 
heart attacks. The Bible is clear that man's hearts failing them for fear, coma, failing them for fear. And amongst the other things that could cause them fear, it is looking toward those things which are coming on the earth. That's an example of some of the things that could cause our heart attacks. Apprehension. It could cause a heart attack. What are we apprehensive about? The things that are coming onto the, or onto the earth. What will the stock market look like tomorrow? That can lead to a heart attack. And many have suffered these. Health aside, you know, the, the, the diet that we have aside, people are generally apprehensive. And this will be yet another sign. And you want to move on from the health conditions and say, even though this is happening within our hearts, this is happening within our bodies, there shall be a shaking of the powers of heaven. The Bible even confesses that if the days are not shortened, even the most elect will be uh, swayed. They may fall. They may even negate uh, 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 and leave the faith. This is the restraint of heaven that shall be shaken. Satan and his evil accomplices are going to mount a formidable challenge against even heaven itself. Yes, there can be a shaking of the powers in the heavens, the context being the sun and the moon. But the great controversy is a war. I mean, a literal war that is of a scale that is higher than any world war that we have ever witnessed. And the Bible confesses that the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The power that heaven enjoys over the lives of the saints may be shaken. And as a result, heaven shall have to shorten those days because the hold, the restraint that heaven has on these elect, it might lose them. Were the devil given a free reign and unlimited time, he will come with a vengeance. He will come with greater force. And the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. For the devil roams about seeking whom he may devour. Woe unto you, earth, for the devil has been cast unto you, and he has no time. He will shake even the powers of heaven. This is a great controversy. This is a war of the ages, and the devil is going to mount a formidable challenge against heaven. We are not here to talk about the devil. The Bible does not end there. It says, amidst all these things, they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of power. He shall come with great glory. I love this because Jesus is about to climb and ride onto the cloud on Mount Olivet and be taken up into the heavens. The angels are yet to say and testify unto the disciples, this same Jesus whom you see being taken up to heaven, in like manner you shall see him descend. They are yet they are yet to comfort them. And Jesus speaks about his return before his departure. And he says, they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power. The three pong power, power of the Father, the power of the angels, and the power of heaven. The whole of heaven shall be emptied and the angels shall join him. It shall be a repeat of the day when Elijah said unto his servant, Go out and check for the rains. As he went out, he says, I see the rains come and they develop as if it is a small palm. It is a small little cloud and so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. We shall see the cloud break the eastern skies. It shall be the size of a palm, one author has put it. And as he breaks the eastern skies and the clouds come closer to us, then we shall learn that up around him it is the angels as they come closer and closer to redeem the, those who have been saved, we shall realize that it is a cloud of angels. All the seraphims, all the cherubims, they would have come to earth to save us from this place of distress. That day is coming. And the Bible says, when you see these things come to pass, what then shall you do? Lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. What is the essence of all these discussions as we have gone through these four episodes? The point is, as you see these things begin to happen, lift up your heads. Do not be downcast. As your economy is tanking as a nation, I live in Zimbabwe where our economy has not been at its best for a while. We should not lose hope. We must gain even a greater hope and lift up our heads for our redemption continues to draw near. It is my prayer. 
and my longing as we come to the end of this series, that as the Lord shall break the eastern skies in that cloud of glory and power, may he find him, find me ready. May he find you ready. If this is your prayer, wherever you're watching this from, I hope you can lift up your head as we call upon the Savior in prayer. A brief moment to pray together. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, dear Lord, pretty soon you shall say, it is finished. Let him who is just be just still. Let him who is unjust be unjust still. We look forward to the day you shall call out and the dead in Christ shall rise and together we shall be taken up to meet you in the clouds. And dear Lord, may that day come even sooner. We know you do not wish that any amongst us should be lost, but all must be saved into glory. And so you have sent out, go ye therefore, teach and baptize as I have commanded. And dear Lord, here is the word that goes out and comes into our hearts to remind us of your soon coming. We may have forgotten and conducted ourselves as if there is no eternity to come. How we pray, dear Lord, that you may revive us where we have fallen. How we pray, dear Lord, that you may give us the new longing to look forward to that day. So that as you break the eastern skies, we shall say, here is our Lord whom we have waited for. May that day come and find us prepared and ready as individuals, families, and corporates. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen.